leader development activities and the things that kind of the, the richest uh, opportunities you have in an organization, they're only limited by the leader's creativity. Some of the very best ones I've seen are like team building exercises where you get a team together and you rotate the leaders out uh, through that exercise. It could be a confidence course. It could be just daily physical readiness training. Uh, something as simple as that. Or some activity that you have to perform in a motor pool or something else. But building on that team and then also placing other leaders in the position to where they have to actually be challenged for that activity. You know, I really think it, it comes back to assigning responsibility and holding people accountable. Give them more responsibility than they're used to having and test their limits. I've seen leader courses at the organization level, you know, so when a brand new, you know, leader comes in and it's just not a non-commissioned officer, it can be those young lieutenants out of the, out of the basic course that you integrate them, you receive and you integrate them into the organization effectively. That allows you to start initially building right from the onset of their arrival, uh, start to take a look at those particular individuals, look at their knowledge, skills and attributes. I mean, holistically, we're all different. So how do you look at a particular individual and say, well, I think we need to build upon these attributes in this particular individual. That's Lieutenant A. Lieutenant B is different. Maybe it's his, his knowledge. Maybe it's her skills. Uh, so everybody's different, and it's going to take an investment from not only that leader one level up, but two levels up, but individual enough to each particular individual where it looks at their strengths and weaknesses, where they currently sit, builds upon those strengths, but simultaneously looks at those weaknesses. It is essential for commanders and unit leaders to develop and understand formal and informal indicators that assess the effectiveness of unit leader development. Evaluating unit leader development can be difficult because we're talking about something that has tangible and intangible aspects to it. The intangibles are what's difficult. We often can see good leaders and we can see good leadership, but how do you actually codify that? How do you explain that? So having measures of effectiveness of measures of performance really help. Uh, so every training opportunity that you're going into, you have a training evaluation outline. At the end of that, you have measures uh, to be able to tell if your training was effective. So by placing subordinate leaders in a leadership position and then holding them to that training evaluation outline is a way. That's just an example of turning a training opportunity into a leader development opportunity because they are one and the same. There are a lot of great informal day-to-day -day indicators that sort of tell you that you're on the right path with your unit leader development program. Some of those include having a esprit de corps and pride in your unit, uh, wanting to come to work every day and doing a little bit more. Those are all great indicators that you've got the climate right, that you're helping to develop others. When people seek you out as a mentor, that's a good indicator that you're on the right path as a leader yourself. At any given moment, at any given relationship, uh, any kind of exchange that you have, if you take the time and you spend that time, you're gonna see the fruits of that labor. And when they come back to you two days later to share either good or bad news, that's an indicator that you've got leader development right. One of the key points that I make to, to leaders all the time is that the mission will be accomplished. And I'll and I guarantee you that as we look back at what we've accomplished in Iraq and Afghanistan, um, the mission is accomplished. But what you will remember uh, in the twilight of your career as you think back, it really will be not the things that you have done, but the people you have developed. And again, your investment in these young people and the, the way they will grow and prosper and support our Army and become all the things that they uh, should uh, become. Uh, when you reach my age at uh, 34 years of service, uh, you think about really not the things that you've done, but the people whose hand, who, who you have had a hand uh, in their personal development over time. I think that is the greatest legacy that you can have as a leader.